Good night, everyone. <clears throat> I don't know about you, but I look forward to being in the house on Wednesday nights. Of course, I'm here in the house every day and almost every night, but especially on Wednesday nights, I look forward to be here because I know that I am not here alone, that you would come, and I want you to know when you are not here, I feel a little disappointed that you didn't come. But when you are here, you do encourage, and I want to say thanks to each and every one of you for taking the time out and making the sacrifice to be in the house of the Lord. You're not here because you don't have anything to do. You're here because you want to hear from the Word of God. You want to learn, and as we learn, we want to apply, and as we apply, we want to grow and become more and more like our Savior. It is so good to see you here. And for those who are viewing us online, it is a special privilege to be able to speak to you in your homes. And I trust that as you settle around the TV or around the phone or the iPad, whatever you're looking at, that you will not be distracted and you will allow the Word of God to minister to your heart. We're going to begin with a word of prayer, so I'm going to ask you to stand with me. We're going to pray. And our Father, tonight we come to you and we say thank you so much. God, many who woke up this morning are not alive tonight, but God, we are alive. Many who woke up well this morning are not well tonight, Lord, but we are well. God, there are many who would love to be able to come in a service like this, but they are restricted. Some don't have the freedom to do that, but we have the freedom. Many would even just love to have a copy of your word. They don't, but we do. Many would love to have a pastor in the church that they attend tonight, but they don't. God, we are blessed. Many pastors would love to see people in the congregation where they are teaching tonight but God they are few so we want to thank you for every privilege that you have given us and we pray it is our prayer there God that you would help us to study your word understand your word but God more important apply be obedient to your word so help us in this regard may you get the honor and the glory from this service tonight and may your people be blessed. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. And while you are being seated, Sister Yvette is going to come. And she's going to bless our heart with a special number tonight. So come at this time, Sister Yvette. So, I hope you'll enjoy it. All of my friends that I knew yesterday Gone Going home, home. Gone Going home This thing buzzing It's pretty fast, eh? Let me begin my song again all of my friends that I knew yesterday Gone home, gone home The same birds in the dell still seems to sing Gone home, gone home They join the heavenly host they walk in the streets of pure gold. They left one by one when the work here was done. Gone home, real gone home. Life here is lonely since I gone on before. 
Gone home, gone home. The old weeping willow that stood by the door sadly said, Gone home. The trumpet will sound on the great judgment day. Come home, come home. We'll see all our friends who have gone on before, gone home, gone home. They join their heavenly form. They walk in the streets of pure gold. They left one by one when the work here was done, gone home. We'll go home. Sister Yvette says she can sing that for me. I wonder if you think I'm going home now. <laughs> I understand, Sister Yvette. I know you're singing that because my brother who has gone home, I do understand that. I don't know about you, but this book of Philippians, even though it's not a very large book, it is a book that I've enjoyed for many, many years. And as I sat down and study Philippians and put it together, and then come to teach it to you, I, I find it to be amazing. There's so much that we can learn from this book. We close last uh, evening. And uh, we were talking about when we closed it, uh, about peace. I close by saying that this peace passes all understanding. It transcends all understanding. It goes beyond or rises above all that we may think or what we may seem to understand. The purpose of it when we get it is to guard your heart and your mind I said to you that peace is like that military soldier who stands on God to protect the one of the ones that he is guarding when you place that trust in God he puts peace under God to make sure and to protect you from worry this peace cannot come to you from any human it comes only through Jesus Christ. Get that praying right, and your mind will be right, heart right, and peace would be activated. Right thinking or think right. And then I use the verse in Philippians chapter 4 and I said finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely the things that are a good report if there be of any virtue and if there be of any praise think on these things now when you think of peace you think of the mind to have peace one's mind must be on God if you notice the link that we sent out today anybody notice the link it has something special in it it says no God, no peace. It says something else. No God, no peace. Okay, it said no God, no peace. No God, no peace. You got it? Okay. Explain it to me.
exactly if you don't know God you don't have peace but when you KNOW God you KNOW peace and I thought that that was so interesting uh, to just stop and share it with you so when we think of peace you think of the mind to have peace one's mind must be on God with so many things happening around us if we put our minds on those things those things will take away the peace from us but with all that is happening around us if we keep our mind on God focus on God going to Angola the sea is rough God said I'm going to take you there safe it doesn't matter what happens on the outside God said I'm going to take you there safe and because God said I'm going to take you there safe it doesn't matter what happened we have to keep our minds on God Isaiah the prophet said in chapter 26 verse 3 to prove what I just said to you I want you to pay attention to this he says thou will keep him thou will in what perfect peace whose mind is what is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee so to have peace one's mind must be on God thou will keep him in perfect peace not only peace but perfect peace nothing would bother you if your mind is stayed on God in Romans chapter 8 and verse number 6 Paul to the Romans he said for to be carnal minded is death but to be spiritual minded thinking spiritually is life and peace a lot of people say I don't know what happened I don't have no peace well you know what happened your mind is not on God you say pastor even if I try to put my mind on God I still don't have peace well you're probably carnal minded you need to be spiritually minded thoughts are powerful hello thoughts are powerful thoughts produce deeds before something is done it is always thought of you may not have thought of it for a long time but it is always thought of first a man thoughts determine who he is and what he does let me say that again a man thoughts determine who he is and what he does pastor are you sure of that proverbs 23 and verse 7 here's what it says for as a man thinketh in his heart what did the bible say so is he thoughts are powerful they produce deeds before something is done it is always thought of a man thoughts determine who he is and what he does eat and drink saith he to thee but his heart is not with thee wrong thoughts will lead to spiritual restlessness if you are not thinking right you will not find yourself resting right spiritually godly thinking will always produce peace godly thinking we are often told if one plays with fire you say the rest if one plays with fire sister joanne what happened you get burned ain't you if one plays with fire he will get burned it is a true saying why he gets burned fire is hot fire is hot and if you or I 
connect with it you will experience that it is hot the word of God is true just like fire is hot the word of God is true and if you obey it you will find the word of God to be accurate not just to read it not just to understand it and and you know the older I become the more I look at Christianity the more I look at the lives of people and I notice that some people love to hear the word some people understand the word most people do but the problem doesn't come where we hear the word or understand the word the problem comes when that's all we hear it and understand it but we don't obey it you want to make coffee you want to make your tea in order for you to make your tea what you need you need hot water you need hot water now how are you going to get hot water you got to do what's necessary to get the hot water you got to do what's necessary now hot the, 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 the stove could be there lit if you don't put that kettle on or that pot on on that fire with that water you will not get hot water though you got everything for the hot water you got to do what is necessary in life you may say I want a house you walk you spend everything you work for how are you gonna get a house how are you gonna get a house you say you want a house you start saving you don't have all the money to build a house but you get a piece of land you dig you you, you dig a foundation and you start to build eventually you will get a finished house you got to do what is necessary to get the results and so it is in our Christian lives wrong thoughts would lead to spiritual restlessness godly thinking will always produce peace like I say, we are often told if you play with fire, you'll get born. And the fire is very hot and the word is true. If you obey it, you will find it to be accurate. In John's Gospel, chapter 17 and verse number 17, the scripture says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. If you see it in the Bible, it is truth. The word of God is truth. When God says something, he says what he means and he means what he says it is true if one believes the Bible and obey the Bible one will know that the God of truth is the one responsible for its writings for in 2nd Timothy chapter number 3 verse 16 and 17 all scripture is given by inspiration of God all scripture not just some all scriptures given by inspiration of God which means that God inspires it all he said and it is profitable all of it is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect truly or thoroughly whichever one you want to use furnish unto all good works the Word of God will get the job done the thought life listen carefully the thought life is powerful hello the thought life is powerful because it all begins in the mind everything that that happened today with you up to now began in your mind you had it in your mind that when you finish work you're going to go home or you're not going to go home you're going to come straight to church or you're going to go home and you're going to get ready and come to church and you got to do this first and do that you're looking at the time you got it all in your mind i got to get this done in time i got to leave home by a certain time in order for me to get there a certain time you played it out all in your mind the thought life is powerful because everything begins in the mind and because of that watch this if you saw sow a thought what would you reap an action if you sow a thought you reap an action but it doesn't stop there 
if you sow an action, you reap a habit. It starts with a thought. You sow it, the thought. It grew to an action. You, you grow the action, whatever it is. It becomes a habit. So you're doing it over and over. You sow a habit. You reap character. You sow a character and you reap destiny. I say that to say this. Where did it start? It started in the mind. It all started with the thought. And this is what Paul is teaching the folks here at Corinth. Now, what are the things believers should constantly find themselves, ourselves, thinking about? What are the things that we are to be constantly thinking about? The scripture told us. One, think on what is true. We could either think on what is true, or we can think on what's not true. You see... In John chapter 7 and verse 18, he that speaketh of, of himself seeketh his own glory. But he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Even, even our thought life. We got to be careful when we get up in the morning. Who are we trying to promote? We have to be very careful that we are not promoting ourselves. Our desire should be to promote God. In John chapter 8 and verse number 44, Ye are of your father the devil. Of course, John was not speaking to believers when he said this. He was speaking to people that are not saved, ungodly. Those who say that they believe in God, he says, you are of your father the devil some people say we all are god's children that is not true we are all god's children by creation he created all of us but to become a child of god you must be born again so we are not all god's children if we are all god's children then this scripture should not be in the bible he said you are of your father the devil and now because they are of their father the devil what did he say he said the lust of your father you will do you you got his dna you will behave like him the lust of your father you will do he said he was a murderer from the beginning yes he abode not in the truth why because there's no truth in him ain't no truth in satan it doesn't matter how he makes it song how he makes it look there's no truth to him. There's always, it may sound like truth, even when he say he quote in scripture, check, you will see that he twists something up. He will always twist something up. But he wants you to believe that it is the truth. He said when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar, and he's the father of it. Because Satan is a liar, and the father of lies, he wants all mankind to do what? To lie and to corrupt our minds with lies that's what he wants to do he wants to corrupt the mind of the believer with lies paul wrote to the corinthians in his second letter to them in second corinthians 11 and verse number three he says but i fear lest by any means as satan beguiled eve through his subtlety so your mind should be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ. That's what he wants to do. He wants to corrupt our minds that um, just like he did to Eve, he wants to do to us. He said, so your mind should be corrupt from the simplicity that is in Christ. When one mind is filled with truth, it is the Holy Spirit of God that is in control. When your mind is filled with truth, it is the Spirit of God that is leading, that is in control of the mind. This past week, um, 
something rests with me for the past two weeks and it is what happens with the with the flesh and the spirit the bible said the spirit lost it against the flesh and they're one you know different to the other and i thought will the flesh ever get better the more you become a christian will the flesh get better talk to me let's be honest would the flesh get better so you are saying then that from now until you die there will be this battle where the spirit is against the flesh so here's what i'm saying it doesn't matter how long i have been saved one of the things i must always be careful with is what the flesh the flesh it is my biggest enemy i walk around with my biggest enemy every day and the flesh and the spirit is constantly in battle now what happens is that now i must be careful which one i give into which one i feed so that one would be the winner you have to starve the flesh that's why paul talked about he said he's crucified every day every day you you see it would be so easy and nice if you can crucify the flesh today and you finish with that no 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 let me be honest with you you may crucify the flesh right there at the altar and while you're walking down from the altar, somebody may be sitting down right there in the pew. You didn't even get too far from the altar. Right there in the pew and the flesh is ready to act again. That's an enemy that we have. And we must be careful. It is all in our minds. We have to be careful. We have to be careful. He says, sanctify them with thy truth. Thy word is true truth in john chapter number five and verse number six he says this is he that that came by water it could mean here the word and blood the cross even jesus christ not by water only but by water and blood as and it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth when one finds himself thinking on lies so one will find him or herself somebody in the room when one finds him or herself thinking on lies soon one will find him or herself telling lies you just think on them just leave Satan play them in your mind and pretty soon you will find yourself telling lies so so what Paul is saying think on the truth because if you think on lies you will find yourself telling lies think on the truth we know the word of god is truth so let's saturate our minds with the word of god in ephesians chapter 4 and verse number 25 he says wherefore put away a line speak every man truth with his neighbor for we are members one of another ephesians 6 14 stand therefore having your loins go about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness so what should be coming from our mind what we should be thinking on number one truth he said something else he said think on what is honest and just think on what is honest and just things that are worthy of respect things that are honorable things that are correct are things that are fair too many put their minds on things that are unfair and unjust and things that are dishonorable you cannot put those things in your mind and believe that you will not start practicing them you got to think on things that are just and things that are honest to the corinthians he wrote in the second letter chapter 8 verse number 21 he said providing for honest things not only in the sight of the lord but also in the sight of men provide a hey, get things honestly they, you know some people 
they have a way of being dishonest to to make it in life and uh, sometimes they feel when you are not dishonest that you're not going to make it another christian brother i probably told you this a long time ago when i was back home in business uh, one saturday we had a sale so we were moving some things on the outside of the building so that people would see as they passed by he drove down the road and he said hey what's happening today see we got a little sale here and uh, he's just trying to raise some funds to pay off some bills he said i want to tell you something i said just go right ahead tell me he said uh, you're not going to make it a christian brother here he said you're not going to make it i said why not he said because you fail to understand that this is a dog eat dog world in other words the way how you're doing things you are not going to make it you have to change and be more aggressive in getting things they know how to get things this honestly but paul wrote to titus and he said but a love of hospitality a lover of good men sober just holy and temperance when the mind is filled with these things like lies unfair things that are unjust and dishonorable things it robs you of your joy it robs people of god and then thirdly think on things that are pure and things that are lovely in the mind we must be thinking on things that are pure and things that are lovely it's all in verse number eight of ephesians chapter four things that are pure are defined as morally clean undefiled that's what he's speaking about and first Timothy five and verse number 22 he said lay hands suddenly on no man neither be partaker of any man saying keep thyself pure we are to keep ourselves pure as believers all believers should keep themselves in all purity and first john chapter 3 verse 3 said and every man that have this hope in him purifieth himself even as he is pure so think on things that are spiritually attractive things that are lovely spiritually admirable things that are pleasing to god in the mind fill your mind with lovely thoughts of god and of his works number four think on the things that are of a good report but some people like news you know some people you start to tell them something or they know that you know something they feel like they would want to get inside of you to make sure they get that juicy piece of news and sometimes I tell people, I said, don't you see that I'm not going to tell you? So how are you going to know now? Well, if I am not going to tell you, then you have to go inside and see if you find it. People just love news. Watch. He said, think on things that are of a good report. And very few people love good news. They like to hear juicy news about somebody else. Things worth talking about. Think on things that worth talking about. Things that uplift. Think on those things. Things you are not ashamed to talk about. Sometimes you want to tell somebody something, you look around and say, let me see who see who listening and then you go watch you know you shouldn't say that things that are uplifting think things think on things that the end will result in a good report the things that have what you carry the meaning of a high moral standard those things are excellent praise means praise worthy things Think on things that you can openly give praise to. Let those things occupy your thought life. Not just once in a while, but constantly be thinking on those things. Now, had you ever noticed a cow at night? 
Anybody? I know you don't see much cows in St. Martin. You ever notice a cow at night? What are you doing? Join your squirt, right? A cow lies down and chews its cud. C-U-D. A child of God should meditate on those things. Right thinking produces right living. Just like a cow would do that at night, we need to stop and meditate on the things that are right. Proverbs 4 and verse number 23 says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Let's go on. He talks about right living or living right. So we go to verse number 9 of Philippians chapter 4. Those things which ye have bought long, Paul, how could you say to them the things that they have learned? He could only say to them the things that you have learned because he was aware that he taught them those things. He said, those things which you have bought long. While he was teaching them those things, they did something. He said, and received. So they received the things that he was teaching. He said, and heard. And then he goes a little bit deeper. He said, you have learned those things. You have received those things. You have heard those things. But he said, you have seen those things in me. The things that you have seen in me. If you don't have nobody else, for example, he said, I am your example. He said, do. Do what? The things you have learned, the things you have received, the things you have heard, and the things you have seen in me. Do. Do those things. He's speaking about living right. He said, and when you do those things, the God of peace shall be with you. It is wanting to read God's word. It is something else to understand God's word. And even believe the word. But watch this. And this is where I am in my life. And this is what bothers me in my life. When it comes to pastoring. But unless we obey the word, unless we obey what we have learned, it will make no difference in our lives. Hello? We heard it. We learned it. We even seen it in others. Unless we do it, unless we obey it, it will make no difference in our lives. We are called upon to practice doing right what should we be doing practicing doing right right living will come about when right thoughts control the mind hello it's like what you put in and that computer of yours that's what it will spit out right living will come about when right thoughts control the mind before one can do right one needs to be taught what is right. You need to be taught what is right. So one needs to hear what is required. One needs to receive it in his heart. What the ears pass through the mind, one needs to have the right attitude towards God and his word. Let me say that again. As believers, we all need to have the right attitude towards God. Let me show you a powerful scripture. And Luke chapter 6 and verse number 44. Watch this. What and why call me Lord, Lord? Okay, so here we see there are those that were referring to him as Lord. And they were calling him Lord, Lord. And he said, let me ask you a question. Why are you calling me Lord, Lord? And do not the things which I say. How could I be your Lord? I am not your Lord. I am not your master. You are not following what I have said. You are just giving lip service. You are calling me Lord, Lord, and you are not doing what I say. We must obey God's word. Those believers to whom Paul wrote, 
had him as a witness to the things that he is admonishing them to do they saw it in his life now they are admonished to do it in other words put it in practice not just hear it not just learn about it not just understand it put it in practice someone say what you do speak so loud i cannot hear a word you say and not that i'm deaf yeah i'm hearing with my ear but it makes no sense because the life does not match up with what you say and i find that this is something that we as believers need to stop and pay attention to in james chapter number one in verse number 22 he says be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving your own selves again in chapter 5 15 of john in verse number 14 he said ye are my friends if you do whatsoever i command you you're my friend not if you listen to what i say not if you understand what i say but if you do what i command you then you are a friend of the lord in chapter 13 verse 17 he says if you know these things happy are ye if you do them doing is important chapter 2 verse 5 his mother said unto the, the, the servants whatsoever he said unto you do it that's good advice whatever he says to you do it facts in the head will never ever be enough hello facts in the head will never be enough there must be truth in the heart paul not only taught the truth he lived the truth before those whom he taught in verse 9 second part he said and the peace of god shall be with you the god whose character is peace this god is the giver of peace those who have a godly attitude whose thoughts are righteous whose deeds are holy will be guarded by the peace of god and the god of peace is with them at all times but our thoughts must be right for the believer to develop spiritual stability there must be discipline added to faith that produces a proper attitude which comes from thoughts and actions described in this passage so we reach the verse number 10 and he says he gave reasons to rejoice and verse number 10 he said but i rejoice in the lord greatly watch this that now at the last your care of me had flourished again wherein you were also you were also careful but you lack opportunity now he he's here talking to them about peace and then he switched to talk to them about something else i would understand this because he want to get this in before he ends the chapter before he ends his letter he wants to talk to them about this he wants to commend them about this now paul as a missionary he traveled from one place to another for the sole purpose of presenting the gospel let me say it again paul traveled from one place to another for the sole purpose of presenting the gospel when i came from anguilla i came from anguilla with some knowledge about building when some folks on this island knew that i had the knowledge about building some of the folks on the island encouraged me to even form a company and get into building on this island they showed me how you know if i get into building how i will do so much better financially but did i come here to do building did i come here to farm a company no i didn't come here to farm no company i came here for the purpose to preach the gospel paul led people into accepting jesus christ as savior and lord and he led them to grow in christ now he said 
that now at the last your care of me had flourished again. Let me explain that. This church at Philippi so loved this man, the Apostle Paul, that their hearts went out to him to what he was doing. Hello. They loved him. Their, their hearts went out to him for what he was doing. What he was doing? Preaching the gospel and bringing people to Christ. They knew that he had needs and took him on as a missionary and they supported him. Watch this. That's one of the reasons why we support missionaries because it's biblical. He used the words, but I rejoice in the Lord greatly. The work of God in these believers caused them to love him and their love for the Lord, his work, and Paul, his worker, caused them to not only say they love him, watch this, but they acted based on God walking in them. What did they do? They acted based on God walking in them. Says fine for me. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 9 and I'll wait for you as you find that. So Paul wrote to them and he said but I rejoice greatly. That is he experienced joy and gladness at a high degree he was able he was made joyful they made him joyful he was um, above happy anybody ever see um, deal no deal everybody anybody ever see that these days look at my tv can't catch nothing else but that and, and, and today I notice, and, and I notice it all the time when I look at it. People get happy when the million is in, and when the 500,000 is in, and when they hit the $1 and the $5 and things like that. Man, you would see them dancing and carrying on. They get happy. But sometimes that happiness doesn't last for long. Because the next two numbers they call, the million gone, the 500,000 gone, and the happiness gone. So Paul did not say, you see, you got to be careful with happiness. When it comes to joy, that's a different story. Watch. Uh, a man could drink rum and he could be happy. But next morning, he vomit up his stomach because of the overhang. So watch. Paul didn't say, you made me happy. He said, I had deep joy but i rejoice greatly that is he experienced joy and gladness at a high degree he was made joyful hmm. you ready for me sis second corinthians chapter number 11 verse 9 so we know that these philippian believers supported him when he had needs they helped him second corinthians chapter 11 verse 9 now he is writing to the corinthians watch this and he's saying something to them and you know we have a way of claiming every promise in the bible and saying that's mine and sometimes i look at people and say but you don't qualify for that you you you, you and you claiming it and you're not going to get it so you're saying that god is a liar no 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 god ain't no liar you didn't qualify for that watch this he said he wrote to the Corinthians and he said to them, when I was present with you, hello, he said, when I was at church with you, when I was preaching here at church with you, and wanted, what is he saying? There was a time when I was with you, Corinthians, and I had needs. What happened? He said, I was chargeable to no man in other words even though he had needs he didn't go to them he didn't tell nobody hey help me with this he said i was chargeable to no man and when i think of that it would seem to me like 
some of the Corinthians had a bad attitude and he didn't want to be blamed wrongly he said for that which was lacking to me watch this the brethren which came from Macedonia what did they do they supply and in all things I have kept myself from being burdensome unto you and so I will keep myself I didn't come to you preaching to you for anything I didn't want to be a burden to you but these same people that I am speaking about now here in Philippi they are the ones that met my need a little lower down in the chapter you would find that Paul even say I robbed other churches to meet your needs hello in other words he, he's saying when you should have been taking care of these needs I took it from other churches they sent it and I took it I took it to fulfill your needs here but watch this so now we come back to Proverbs chapter number 29 verse 2 he says when the righteous are in authority the people rejoice talking about rejoicing People always ask me, Pastor, who should I vote for? Check the scripture. Check the scripture. And you know, after you don't vote, be careful what you're asking God to do. Because God gave you the privilege to do that which is right. That's what he said. He said, when the righteous are in authority, what will happen? The people rejoice. Hmm. But when the wicked bear it rule, the people mourn. So if you have a choice to vote, and there is the righteous, and there is the wicked. Well, pastor, I like this person. Uh, that person, pastor, I don't like that. Watch, watch. He said, here's what you do. When you put in the wicked, prepare yourself that you're going to mourn. When you put in the righteous, prepare yourself. Pastor, some people now get so smart. Pastor, how do I know they're righteous? Boy, I tell you. Bro. Because people have already set in their minds what they are going to do. So they disqualify anybody and everybody. He said, This gladness or rejoicing was in the Lord when he saw and experienced what God was doing in their lives that caused them to act the way they did he was he wasn't so joyful because they sent him money he was happy to see how these people allowed the word of god to minister to their hearts and now they're doing what the word of god says that they should do and this brought joy to him he said that now at last your care for me had flourished there is no doubt when paul used the word again he had in mind their care for him when he was with them at Philippi and served there as their leader. He was the one who brought the gospel to them and they accepted Christ and the church was started. I also can say he remember when he left Philippi and went to Macedonia cities such as uh, Thessalonica and Berea. Remember Philippi is part of uh, one of those also. He said, they showed their love and cared for him by sending support to him and they were the only church that helped to support him in Philippians chapter 4 verse number 15 and verse number 16 he says now you Philippians stay with me some of you are a little tired tonight some of you are a little tired tonight stay with me else we can get arms up out oh. in down. We need to finish. We need to show. He says, Now you Philippians know also, I want you to know this, what he want him to know, that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from, Tessal, from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but you only. He went out preaching the gospel, and he said, No church church helped him while he was out there for he said for even in Thessalonica he sent once and again unto my necessities he said you send an offering 
And when you got the opportunity, guess what you did? You sent one again to help me in the preaching of the word. He faced much trouble from those who were the enemies of the gospel as he preached Christ in Macedonia. I want us to pull up Acts chapter 17. And I want to read 13 verses for you. And I'm going to stop. What am I trying to prove to you? From this portion of scripture? He faced much trouble. From those who were the enemies of the gospel. As he preached Christ in the area of Macedonia. Let's look at the trouble that he faced. Let's look at the trouble. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica, where was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them. This is true, huh? This is what actually happened. And three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures. So they would meet on the Sabbath day, and Paul would go on the Sabbath day. They had a custom of saying, anybody got a word for today? And Paul would get up, and he would use the word, and he would reason to them out of the scriptures. The Bible said he was opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ he lucky he last three Sabbath days because they they were against Christ they were not accepting that he is the Lord and watch this and some of them believed while he preached the word some believed and consorted with Paul and Silas and of a devout Greek, a great multitude, and of the chief women, not a few women again. God bless women. We do know what would happen to the church if women were not around. <laughs> women, God bless you. <laughs> I put the message together for Father's Day, all the way down for Father's Day. And I'm going to, I'm hoping that I can take the word of God and show. I don't know whether I should say the male or the men. Really and truly, I don't know whether I should say the male or the men. But show the men where we are. And show the men how we get to where we are in the society today how we get to where we are in the homes today how we get to where we are in the schools today and how we get to where we are in the church today and in the world today and I'm going to take it right back to the scripture and show the men watch God is going to hold us accountable he's going to hold us men accountable that's the reason why you see women are rising up one sister told me Pastor, if I don't lead my home, my home will go to pieces. And there's a husband and a father in there. Women are rising up. Someone said to me the other day, um, Pastor, if the men are not doing this, why don't you allow the ladies to do it? And I had to say, A, not because men are not doing it makes it right for women to do it doesn't make it right not that women cannot do it better than men what God says is what makes it right yeah and then the person wrote me back and said I showed them how, what, how God placed men in authority all the way down and the person wrote me back and said pastor now I understand and I, I felt so well that the person understood but men has we have caused a lot that's happening in the world today we men have caused it and we are going to find ourselves in trouble 
with the one that placed us in authority. And plenty of trouble. We are going to... The homes are in trouble, it's our fault. The schools are in trouble, it's our fault. When I was going to school, the headmaster would be a man. You're going to school now, you look, the biggest man there is the one in grade six. <laughs> All the rest gone. They don't want that. And the ladies now must take this responsibility. The men gone, why? The children are too rude. But you allow the ladies to take the responsibility. We are in trouble. And unless men rise up and do what is required, we will always be in trouble. And we're going to answer to God. We are going to answer to God for what we have done. He said, opening and, alleg and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus whom I preach unto you is Christ. He said, and some believe. We go down to verse number five. Stay. I read verse four already. But the Jews which believe not moved with envy, watch this, and took unto them certain Lord fellows, boy, vulgar fellows, indecent fellows, wicked fellows, crude fellows of the baser sort, and gathered a company and set all the city on an uproar and assaulted the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. Watch this. Stay with me. I let you know I'm over time. And when they found them not, they drew Jason and certain brethren unto the rulers of the city, crying, These men have turned the world upside down or come hither unto us. At least they knew that these men preaching the word of God, they had done something, and they say they turned the world upside down and they come here to turn our world upside down to. Whom Jason had received. And these all do contrary to the decree of Caesar, saying that there is another king, one Jesus. They come together and this is what they're doing. And they trouble the people there. And they're talking about Paul and the rest of the men. And the rulers of the city, when they heard these things, what happened? And when they had taken security of Jason and of the others, they let them go. He had, he had post bond. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea, and coming thither unto thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. Verse eleven. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and such the scriptures daily, whether these things were so. So what they heard, these men preaching, they went back, checked the scriptures to see if they were preaching the truth. Therefore, many of them believe also of an un of honorable women, which were Greek and of men, not a few. Verse 13. But when the Jews of Thessalonica had knowledge that the word of God was preached of Paul at Berea, they came hither also and stirred up the people. Mm. They stirred up the people to make war with these men. And as you continue to read from verse number 14 down to verse number 16, you see Paul had to leave the area, went into Achaia and in Philippi where the church was and the church that continues to support him as, his, uh, as he ministered in Athens and in Corinth. He had to run many times they beat paul and silas and the attitude of these boys the, the scripture said after they finished beating them they walked out and laughed and say we thank god that we were found worthy to be beaten for the lord jesus christ hello the attitude was we thank god that we were found worthy to be beaten for the lord jesus christ the book of philippians is a great book great book hey the, the verse that says my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches and glory and people grab that and say my God shall supply all my needs well how come your needs ain't supplied all <laughs> well if that is for all of us then how come the needs ain't supply all he was speaking to a people that had sacrificed and gave out of their deep 
poverty for the work of God. And he turned around and said, my God shall supply all of your needs because of how you give from your deep poverty. Any question? Brother Carl is going to get the ushers together and they're going to come. And uh, we're going to pick up an offering. Any comments? Maybe I, pre I teach too simple. I love the book of Philippians. I love the Bible. But when it comes to Philippians, hey, it's such a great, great, great book. You know, it all depends on how you read the scripture. If you read the scripture correctly, you'll be able to understand the scripture. Sometimes it depends on where you start. It would help you to understand the scripture. Sometimes we start in an area where we should have started a little bit higher where we could get the full story. Ushers, would you come please? I leave my pocketbook in the house. They're all right to leave it in there. I had nothing in the house. Let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this precious moment that we're going to gather, study your word, O oh Father, and see the firmness of our forefathers, O oh Lord, how they stand for your word and how they preach your word. O oh Lord, may we get a, a desire like Paul and Sirius and all of them, O oh Lord, that went along and, and established your word for us, O oh Father. Help us now as we give to other, we give towards your work, towards the missionaries that are out there, oh Lord. Help this money to reach as far as it goes, oh Father, as it's supposed to go, oh Father. Bless it now, I pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen to the announcements. Join us for Resurrection Weekend right here at the Good News Baptist Church. On Good Friday, the Ladies' Prayer Group is inviting all ladies to join us in prayer on Friday, March 29th from 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. for a great time of prayer, worship, fellowshipping, and breakfast will be served immediately after. Men of Concern is also inviting all men to their Good Friday prayer and breakfast Friday, March 29th from 6 a.m. to 8 a.m. 7.30 p.m., the Bible Baptist Church in Sucker Garden is inviting everyone to their annual Good Friday concert. Easter Sunday, March 31st, invites someone to join you for our Easter Sunday morning service at 8.30 a.m. 7 p.m., the Worship and Choir Ministry presents Easter night worship service. It's a night of praise and adoration, giving thanks to the Lord for His amazing sacrifice. On Easter Monday, April 1st, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., please join us for our Easter picnic. Embrace the sun, the sea, and a plethora of fun activities as we gather at Mary's Boone Beach. Don't forget, to wear your district colors to show your pride and unity. The list of districts and their respective colors is available in the foyer. Let's discover which district will surpass last year's champions and seize the covered trophy. Delight in delicious food available for purchase courtesy of the Watch Care Ministry. Chicken $11 Combo 13, ribs 14, and fish $15. Please purchase your tickets from any member of the Watch Care Ministry. The Women of Excellence Ministry is inviting all ladies to the 2024 Ladies Retreat on April 27th, 29th, and May the 1st. The theme is Embracing your wholeness. The registration fee is only $50. Register before the 7th of April and receive $5 of the total registration fee. Here is an exciting upcoming event you certainly don't want to miss. March 31st, 
31st and Friday, April 5th, beginning at 7 p.m. at the St. Augustine's Anglican Church in East End. Tickets are 10 U.S. dollars. Then, on Sunday, April 7th at 4 p.m., the St. Augustine's Chorale comes to St. Martin. The musical will be held at the Good News Baptist Church at 30 St. Peter's, St. Martin. A love offering will be taken. For more information, visit www.stmarysparishai.com. In regards to those announcements that you've been hearing, especially the announcement that you have heard of the watch gear, you would hear the watch gear would be selling tickets, and this is the price of a ticket, fish is this, chicken is that. Here's what I want to always remind you. The watch gear does that for Good News Baptist Church to be able to support monthly. They buy food, put in boxes, so that their ministry could run. The money is that we pay for a lunch from goes right into the church in that ministry they use it for that purpose so please let's support that ministry and the the group that comes from Anguilla there are some 40 something of them coming over on the Sunday they leave in Anguilla at one o'clock and um, I, I could honestly tell you that that every time they came here it is my belief unless there's, there's something that we don't know about. Every time they came here, they had to take money out of their pockets regardless of the offering that we give them couldn't pay their expenses. So they come as a ministry to us. Bear in mind that to come on a boat is $30 plus $11 tax, that's 41. Then it's $30 plus $5 tax, that's uh, another $35. So they pay about $76 just to go and come that one person and there's 40 something of them so i encourage you to bring along a love offering usually you have heard they charge in angular i told them we don't sell tickets here we trust the lord will just we would give through offerings and they're coming this year again so thank you very much for supporting these ministries it's not that people making money putting in their pockets and becoming rich no they are just paying their expenses to get backward and forward and the watch care ministry they're just taking these monies and supporting when when someone dies the watch care comes right alongside of that family and cook up all that they need and they support that family the watch care is always there um, representing good news baptist church so um if what's 13 dollars chicken Fish is thirteen dollars. Fish can't be thirteen. Combo is combo is fourteen. Yeah. You getting you getting chicken and ribs for fourteen dollars. I say that to say this. When you give the fifteen dollars, don't stand up there looking at a person in them face, waiting for that one dollar. Hello, what did I say? Don't stand up there waiting, 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 waiting. The one, the one dollar, watch, it goes to feed the hungry. And if you don't get your food, don't tell them, give them the money back. Bless that. Thank you all so much. Father, bless your people as they leave now. Take them to their home safely. Thank you for the time that we spent together. Help us to remember what we have studied tonight. Help us to think right and God so that we will live right. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you drive back home.